Do you know Penn Jillette? Penn Jillette's an atheist, okay? I want to talk to you about this. Uh, I get home from the show, and at the end of the show, as I've mentioned before... He, he's an atheist... Um, uh, what is it? M magician. An atheist magician, okay? Before we go out and we, uh, we talk to folks and, you know, sign an occasional autograph and shake hands and so on. And there was one guy waiting over to the side in the um, what I call the hover position after I was all done. Big guy, probably about my age. Big guy. And um, he had been the, um, the guy who has uh, picks the joke during our psychic comedian section of the show. Uh, so he had the props from that in his hand because we give those away. He had the the joke book and the and the envelope and the paper and stuff. If you haven't seen the live show, I, uh, it's not worth explaining. But he had props in the show that we'd given him from the night before. Uh, he wasn't the guy that night. And he walked over to me and he said, um, I was here last night at the show. And uh, uh, I saw the show and I liked it. I wanted, and he was very complimentary about my use of language and... Um, complimentary about, you know, honesty and stuff. He said nice stuff. No reason to go into it. He said nice stuff. And then he said, I brought this for you. And he handed me a uh, Gideon pocket edition. Um, I thought it said from the New Testament, but I also thought it was Psalms from the New Testament, right? Or, uh, Psalms from the New, just part of the New Testament. Little book about those little thing. ones, so, Psalms, thing. Proverbs, and New Testament in full. He said, I wrote in the front of it, and I wanted you to have this. I'm kind of uh, proselytizing. And then he said, I'm a businessman, I'm, I'm sane, I'm not crazy. And he looked me right in the eye and did all of this. And, uh, it was really wonderful. I believe he knew that I was an atheist. But he was not uh, defensive and he looked me right in the eyes. And he was truly complimentary. It wasn't in any way, it didn't seem like empty flattery. He was really kind and nice and sane and looked me in the eyes and talked to me and then gave me this Bible. And I've always said, you know, that I, I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that, uh, well, it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward. And atheists who think that people shouldn't proselytize, just leave me alone, keep your religion to yourself. Uh, how much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that, that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. And I've always thought that, and I've written about that, and I've thought of it conceptually. But this guy was a really good guy. He was polite and honest and sane, and he cared enough about me to proselytize and give me a, a Bible, which had written in it a little note to me, uh, not very personal, but just, you know, liked your show and so on. And then like five phone numbers for him and an email address if I wanted to get in touch. Now, I know there's no God, and one polite person living his life right doesn't change that. Uh, but I'll tell you, he was a very, very, very good man. And uh, that's really important. And with that kind of goodness, uh, it's okay to have that deep of a disagreement. I still think that religion does a lot of bad stuff, but man, that was a good man who gave you that book. That's all I wanted to say. 
So there you go. Penn Jillette, atheist. You heard him outright. I, I know there is no God, he said. But this is a really good man. He was trying to do it the best way he could. And I love Penn's insight into the evangelistic enterprise. How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that eternal life is possible and not tell anyone? If I see a truck barreling towards you, there's a certain point at which I tackle you out of this way. And this is more important than a truck barreling at you. I mean, he nails it, right? Now, don't get me wrong. It can be presented in the wrong way. Somebody could go about it in a wrong manner. Some people don't know when to take no for an answer. Some people can be over the top. They can be rude. They can be condescending. On and on it goes. But those problems are endemic to anybody who's sharing their opinions or views with you. I've seen a lot of that in politics. Where people will use the exact same type of incendiary language and things like that. Because you believe differently than them about something. But the fact of the matter is, I think Penn hits the nail on the head. If you believe this is true, Christians, you will tell people. If you believe that this is the way the universe works, you will say something. Now, of course, I believe that the best way to go about doing that is to do so in a respectful, loving, kind, gentle, irenic manner. Allowing somebody to come to their own conclusions and to have their own perspectives, of course. But the fact of the matter, just because you've had a bad experience with somebody and they, that experience has turned you off to religion, doesn't mean that Christians should stop evangelizing. Maybe that Christian should. I don't know. But this is something that we ought to do. Not merely because God tells us, but because it's the right thing to do. I disagree with him, but he's a good man, and he intended to do something good for me. I love what Penn says here. I love what Penn says here, right? And I think that's a very important aspect, something that we need to recognize. Now, for Christians, take that to heart. Do a good job when you seek to evangelize. First of all, evangelize. Don't just keep this to yourself. But secondly, do a good job. Present a good case. Be friendly, loving, irenic. Okay? Do what Penn says, where he's just struck and he's like, this is a good guy. This is a good guy. The fact that he's good doesn't change reality, according to Penn. But I appreciate very much what he had to say and how he went about saying it. Okay? So that's for Christians. But for atheists, for non-Christians... Don't be offended when somebody wants to share their faith with you, right? Penn makes it very clear. If they believe this about you, they love you, care for you, and want the best for you. That's why they're doing it. If not, they hate you. <laughs> or they are so worried about making the situation socially awkward that they're not willing to tell you what they believe the truth is. That's important to understand, and that's important to recognize. Final thing I want to say on this. Your individual perspective, your individual experience, your individual situation is not representative of all perspectives and situations. I see this on both sides. I see atheists often saying things like, well, Christians always blah, 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 blah. And I've seen a lot of Christians say, well, atheists always, blah, 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 blah. Each person is an individual, and those individuals will interact in ways that they interact in. They will have experienced different perspectives, understandings, ideas in those ways as well. And you need to recognize that not every Christian is like the Christians you've met in the past. Not every atheist is like you, the atheist you met in the past. Not everyone is as closed-minded as those you've interacted with before, and not everyone is as open-minded as those you've interacted with before. People are people. They are unique and particular, and as you interact with people who are unique and particular, you may get one situation or another. Don't whitewash everybody. 
Don't say everybody is always like this or everybody is always like that. Take what they say on face value, approach each person as an individual, and interact with them as an individual. And just because the last five atheists you talk to were rude about it doesn't mean this one will be. And just because the last five Christians you talked to didn't seem like they had a brain in their head doesn't mean this one is going to act that way. Have genuine conversations and discussions with people. Recognize that what people are doing is for the purpose, like Penn talks about, of trying to be loving towards you. And people are people, and we're complex entities. We're made up of a lot more than just basic mere ideas. There's substantial overlap, but there's substantial difference between us as well. And so I think all of those things need to be kept in mind as we have these kinds of discussions. All right? Hopefully that was a helpful conversation. Hey guys, a great part of Christian growth and discipleship comes from engaging with one another and iron sharpening iron. If you would like to more actively engage with this community, we would love to have you. If you hit up Twitch or Discord down in the description below, you can get more involved in this conversation and we would love to have you there. Also, if you would like to support this channel, please do so through Patreon. The link is down in the description below. Take care. God bless. Bye now.